Okay, so another super highly anticipated motorcycle mark for the Intermot show is the Indian FTR 1200 motorcycle, uh, brand new in. Um, obviously, Indian have been really dominating the flat tracking scene for quite some time now. And this is really taking a lot of the styling cues, a lot of the inspiration from that scene and bring it into a proper motorcycle that just looks the dogs for me. It, you know, I love it it. it. it does, I think. I think probably fair to say it's not a quintessential flat tracker but it is no. a, it's been a hugely anticipated motorcycle um and, and quite a long time in coming to be fair you know yeah. there's been a lot of talk a lot of rumor a lot of speculation in the press about what what we were actually going to get and, and in yeah. fairness they've, they've remained fairly true to the concept there's an ftr 750 race bike over there and that what they've deliberately done is placed one of these next to it. And you've got to say the it silhouette. Looks so similar. There, there, yeah. is a, there are a huge number of similarities. Yeah. I, and I, the other thing that strikes me, um, which I think is hugely important, is it does look like a true production bike. Yes. You know, it looks really well it finished. Um, and I, I, I had some misgivings about that. You know, this is, a, this is a big step away from what India normally do. Yeah. You know, we all know what they're doing. In fairness, you know, they've done a great job in, in the UK, particularly. Yeah with the Scout, with the Scout Bobber. They are very successful bikes and they've been able sure. to build on that in the UK market. But this is a hugely important bike in terms of cracking UK and Europe yeah. in a much more significant way. And I've got to say, they've made a great job of it. I think they have too. I mean, it's beautiful bike. It's obviously, it's a 1200cc, it's 120 horsepower. Yeah, which again, you know, it, so, I mean, it's going to be really interesting to see how it compares yeah. when they stand it up against the equivalent bikes in the market. Starts at 11,500, I think, for the standard thousand. bike. This is the S version. Yeah, okay, so, so it it's comes a bit more with, money. So uh, I think we were talking, it's got digital display. TFT display, it's got uh, Bluetooth connectivity. Um, which and is a just, USB connection. And a USB connection, which is just um, absolutely awesome. Well, um, it's a modern bike. It's a super modern bike. But yeah, I mean. It's got traction control, switchable traction control. It's got ABS yes. brakes. Yeah. It's got Brembo brakes. So, you know, it's a bit of a lump, this bike. I mean, it's 220 kilos, yeah. 220 odd kilos. So, you know, it, it needs decent brakes. And, you know, I think he's going to live up to it with the well, it's, uh, not, it's, not, it's not Brembo's. the lightest bike in that kind of segment. I mean, it's difficult to place, you know, is it, is it a middleweight? Is it a super naked? It's probably somewhere in the middle of those. At 220 kilos, it's on the heavier side, but yeah. you know, you're gonna, you know that this motor is gonna center, produce The center of gravity is nice, nice and low, yeah. isn't it? But, you know, uh, you can tell that. Well, the, the, the great thing with these kind of lumpy motors is it will make, it will make monster torque. Although, oh. I mean, the, 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 uh, the horsepower figure is actually a, quite a lot higher than I was expecting it to be. Is that? I've got to be honest, you know, 120 sounds, Pretty juicy. Yeah, it does. I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, close to salivation at this point. <laughs> I'd like to have a little play out on these, and I, and I do think, uh, you know, the styling is important, and of course, it's a crucial part of, you know, the appeal of any motorcycle. But when you, when you pit yourself in this market, you're talking about bikes like BMW S1000R. You talk about Aprilia Tuono. You talk about MT09, MT10, R90. yeah, R9T, Kawasaki Z900. Z9, Z1000. You know, there are. That is such a competitive marketplace. So it, yeah. if it rides as well as it looks. It could you know, do really it well. It could do very, very well. Do you yeah. know, and just as well, you know, while I'm looking at it, they've done such a nice job with the rear end on this bike. I'm a sucker for this. Just a completely yeah. clean cut rear seat. I, I mean, you know, the architecture around this, it's very, very difficult to make this look super sexy. But for me, I absolutely love having that. Yeah, no, I do. No I rear do. hugger, no nothing, just a rear light. I mean, I've got to be honest, you know, Euro floor legislation does mean you end up with a set of rear cans that aren't the sexiest things in the world, but I know having been around yeah, the stand there is- I've seen worse. There, well, there, uh, there is a bike here, I think with Akrapovic on it, and it does look better just over there. Um, I, you know, there's gonna be a load of aftermarket solutions for that. If somebody looks at that and thinks, ah. And, 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 it, it, and, it and a nice tail big. tidy as well on it, Mark. Well, you, you wouldn't exhaust, need it. Ni nice well, yeah, maybe, maybe you will, maybe you won't, but you know, imagine if you got rid of that and change the exhaust. No bike. touching, you by were, the way, Aaron, we've been yeah, told, okay. you're not allowed to touch the bike. Okay. But you know, I think this is a phenomenal machine. Yeah. Super excited for this one, and I think it's going to get highly acclaimed, assuming that it rides the way it loves. Yeah, you're not, you're not wrong.